Yabba-dabba-doo! Hi LEGO fans, I'm back with the 24th LEGO idea set, and this time it looks like we've got a page right out of history. Today I'm going to be unboxing, speed building, and reviewing set number 21316, The Flintstones from LEGO Ideas. This is a 748 piece set based on everybody's favourite modern Stone Age family, The Flintstones. The chances are, if you didn't grow up watching the Flintstones, your parents were force feeding you Flintstones vitamin gummies. This is based on a LEGO fan submission by Andrew Clark. But it's fair to say that a lot has changed from the original design. This often happens with LEGO Ideas sets. In fact, there are some really cool details which didn't make it into the final set. Sorry Bam Bam, I'll talk about those a little bit later once we've opened the box. The 748 piece part count includes the Flintstones home in Bedrock, their car which is powered by the courtesy of Fred's two feet, and a cut down selection of minifigures. Fred Flintstone, Wilma Flintstone, Barney Rubble, and Betty Rubble. These look like very cool minifigures, but I'm deeply disappointed that we're missing Pebbles and Bam Bam. The artwork on the box is very, very cool, but my first impressions on seeing this is that the box is suspiciously large for a 750 piece Lego set. It's kind of deep and it contains just a little bit too much Danish air. Not that these things are made in Denmark anymore, of course. I bought mine directly from LEGO, and the box does have a bit of a crease in it. The cardboard isn't particularly strong, and I think they should have put this in a smaller box. But at least the larger size of box allows for some pretty cool artwork. The back of the box shows us a little bit more detail inside the Flintstones house. The house has a removable roof so you can check out the interior. Another disappointment here is that we don't seem to have any of the animal related appliances. We do get a bowling ball and a crate of pins, a front door on which Fred can bang his fist and yell WILMA! And it looks like we're getting a side of Bronto ribs to tip over the car. That is a nice feature from the intro to the show. There's a cosy couch for Betty and Wilma to exchange some gossip, a TV that looks like it's on the fritz, and of course Fred's car so they can head down to the Bowlerama. The Flintstones was an incredibly popular TV show. The first episode aired on September the 30th, 1960. The show ran for 166 episodes and ended on the 1st of April 1966. As a little bonus fact, the first season of The Flintstones was sponsored by Winston Cigarettes. Go 1960s! But you didn't come here for a history lesson, so let's get back to the Lego. Here's everything that came inside the box. We've got six numbered bags of Lego and a 181 page instruction booklet. This contains some background information on fan designer Andrew Clark. You can learn more about the Lego designers, although there's no explanation of what happened to Pebbles and Bam Bam. And there's a nice two page bio where you can learn more about the Flintstones. And looky here, a teal brick separator. I'm going to go ahead and build set number 21316, the Flintstones. And today this is going to be a 90 second speed build.
And here's the completed Flintstone set. Build time today was an hour and seven minutes. There's no doubt this set has a lot of nostalgia appeal for adult collectors of a certain age. Quite how relevant this will be to the average 8 to 10 year old, I really don't know. The 10 plus recommended age definitely suggests this build is suitable for younger builders. And I totally agree with that. There are plenty of innovative build techniques on display here. For example, the only exposed studs you can see on the roof are deliberately exposed studs for detail. But we'll come back to all of that in just a moment. We're going to start out by taking a look at the car, then we're going to take a detailed look at the Flintstones house, and finish up with those really cool looking minifigures. But before we do that, let's compare the finished model to the fan design we could have got. Although on the face of it the final product is very similar, there are a lot of missing elements. I'd estimate that somewhere in the region of 20% of the model just isn't here. One of the most notable absences are the Pebbles and Bam Bam minifigures. Those were super cool and I really would have liked to have seen them in this set. Pebbles Flintstone wasn't born until the end of the third season, so it's kind of understandable that Pebbles and Bam Bam are not included here. Another reason could be that LEGO couldn't secure the rights to the Pebbles and Bam Bam characters. They actually appeared in a spin-off show, the Pebbles Pebbles and Bam Bam show. This featured Pebbles and Bam Bam all grown up and eventually these guys got married. With the spin-off show in mind it's possible that LEGO just couldn't get the rights to use those characters. Next you'll notice in Andrew Clark's fan model the car is mounted on a plinth. I guess it's not that important but it did give the car a very dynamic moving look. Again from the car we're missing the luggage rack on top. In the fan design the roof was made from Lego and in this design the roof is made from fabric. One of my favourite things about the Flintstones was their use of animals to recreate everyday appliances around the house. Andrew Clark's model captures this with a bird record player and even a lizard lawnmower. Both of these are completely omitted from the final design. Speaking of animals, we're missing the Stone Age equivalents of the Flintstones cat and dog. Baby Puss the Sabretooth Tiger is completely omitted from this and the fan design. Although I did see some pictures of the fan design which had Dino in it. Dino of course being the Flintstones pet dinosaur. Now of course in reality humans and dinosaurs were separated by about 65 million years of evolution. So maybe Lego have actually made an important correction to the set. The final piece which was included in the fan set but not in the production set is the welcome to bedrock sign. So is this final set better or worse than the fan design? I'll let you know my thoughts towards the end of the video. Moving swiftly along we've got the Flintstones car. This is a really nice little build and unmistakably Fred Flintstones car as we know and love from the cartoon. The axles are of course made of tree trunks and Lego has added these printed pieces to give that effect. These are actually attached to the moving parts so we get a really nice motion when we move the car. You can also see the rollers for the car are kind of just pushed into the end of that fork shape. That is of course okay for going forwards but I always wondered what would happen if the car went in reverse. And more to the point what holds on the back axle. When it comes to steering this thing it must just use witchcraft or something. There is a steering wheel and the dashboard pivots up and down so you can push the steering wheel towards Fred's hands. The actual steering wheel is another one of those round printed elements. Inside the car we have this bench style seating which is very typical of the 1960s. Although we do have a more sculpted layout for the rear seats which gives us somewhere for Betty and Barney to sit. As you probably noticed just then the roof is on a pivot so you can tilt it back to get to the interior. This makes it much easier to get the minifigures inside. When I say easy in truth it's a little bit tricky but you get there in the end. The rollers have an interesting colour scheme but this does actually match to the cartoon. Maybe we could have had some texture on there but I really am being picky. I'm certainly very pleased that we didn't get a sticker sheet with this set. As I mentioned before the roof is on a pivot for easy access but it's also quite easy to remove for closer inspection. At the bottom we've got the pivot points which allow the roof to connect to the car and then a very simple frame. This is where we attach the fabric piece. The fabric piece is a really nice element and presumably a custom made addition to the set. Just like the real Flintstones car we've got the ragged edge at the front and the ragged edge at the back and then we've got a cut out here for the rear windshield or I guess just a hole where Fred can peer through. We've also got these holes here for the frame to go through and it's a really really nice soft piece of fabric I really like that. My concern about the roof is how well it will last over the years. Will it start to break down and will I have to keep it away from moths? Recreating the scene from the title sequence where Fred, Barney, Betty and Wilma go out to get ribs, we've got this rather large rack of ribs on the car. The ribs are teetering on the kind of tray you would get at a drive-in diner. 
and they look rather too heavy for the car, which allows us to recreate a fun scene. Moving on, we come to what is instantly recognisable as the Flintstones house. And if it wasn't obvious enough, we have the Flintstones mailbox confirming this. This comes with a super exclusive printed curved element, and making this printed element especially rare, it's only on one side of the mailbox. There's a slot in the front for mail, and we have this printed letter. Just like the cartoon, the mailbox is wedged into the branch of a tree, and the base is made out of two different colours of green to make it blend in with the Flintstones lawn. The exterior of the house isn't exactly the same as the fan model, but it's pretty close. The front of the house is pretty smooth, whereas the fan model had some rocky details. But we do have these very cool tiger skin drapes. In fact, we get a pair of those in the window on either side of the door. The door seems authentic enough, but I'm not a big fan of the way it's put together. I'll show you exactly what I mean when we get inside. Outside the door we've got a couple of milk bottles and some really nice foliage elements. There's some nice symmetry going on and we see another planter on the other side. In fact there are quite a few foliage elements included in this set. In my opinion that's never a bad thing. Speaking of foliage elements, they've gone and given us a whole palm tree. At first glance it appears to be adjustable, but in reality this piece just allows it to run off at an angle. And in all honesty this looks great. The only thing I'm not sure of is the pale green colour for the palm leaves. It just looks a little bit washed out. There is a nice surprise however when you look up, and I presume these are going to be coconuts. When it came to the trunk of the palm tree, Lego could have just broken out an old mould. I've got a few of these in my collection and I'm sure this would have done just fine. But I'm guessing by now these are out of production and I don't think Lego likes to break out old moulds. So what we have is a very thin trunk made out of several Lego elements. And to be honest it actually looks really good. While we're focused on this side of the house, let's take a look at that chimney. This is covered in panels which are decorated in various different tiles. And it really does a good job of recreating the stonework. It definitely gives the house a very nice aesthetic. Even up on top this looks very much like a chimney. When building the house the main structure is pretty much a rectangular box. And then on the side we've got these panel pieces which give it a rounded stone age look. There are several of these and they are graduated to give it a really nice appearance. There's similar detailing near the chimney and these pieces just pop off. The roof is quite a sturdy piece of construction and sits at an angle just like it does in the cartoon. If you want to gain access to the interior, you simply lift off the roof. The front wall is sloped in order to keep the roof at the right angle, and we have a convenient ledge near the chimney on which we can hook the roof. As I mentioned before, the roof is rather a sturdy construction, and it's very well engineered. You'll notice lots of bracing on the underside, and it really is a strong structure. For the most part the roof is fairly smooth, but there is the occasional stud and round tile showing. Again this helps to give it a real stone age aesthetic. A slightly more unusual choice of element are these large slope pieces. I imagine it's quite difficult to see on the video, but these have a matte finish, whereas the rest of the roof has a very shiny finish. But in any case, the roof provides a convenient entry point to get to all of the goodness inside. Almost immediately you might spot a very interesting element. We've got this cloud shaped tile used as a coffee table which was most recently used in the collectible Unikitty series. But with the coffee table out of the way we get a good look at Fred's TV. That is a printed tile for the screen which is really nice. And it looks like we've got an explanation for the missing Dino. It looks like the poor little guy got lost. There really is not a lot of space within the Flintstones house. We have their lounge area as you see here. I think that's meant to be a very small kitchen in the corner. I can just imagine the trunk of a woolly mammoth leaning in and filling the sink. There's a couch to sit on and watch TV, but we appear to be completely lacking any bedrooms. On the positive side we have some custom printed artwork featuring a woolly mammoth. I mentioned the front door earlier in the video, and this gives you a better idea of how it's put together. As you can see we've got a couple of sliders on the back of the door to stop it falling apart. This thing is ugly! The hinges are pretty non-standard construction, and it just doesn't feel very nice when you open the door, it's kind of almost falling off. The floor space can be expanded thanks to these two fold out panels. These double the surface area of the floor but don't really add any value to the model. On this side we have the Flintstones phone which uses a shell for the receiver. It's okay but I think the one in the fan model looked a little bit better. On the other side we have a floor lamp and a box containing bowling equipment. I'm pretty sure Fred and Barney did all of their bowling at the bowling alley, so this kind of doesn't make sense to me. And in any case we're missing about 7 of the pins. The lamp is nice enough but it's just a piece of furniture, it doesn't really dovetail into the Flintstones theme. Whilst the interior is aesthetically pleasing and has a few nods to the Flintstones, I think it's a bit of a wasted opportunity. The Flintstones had so many labour 
saving wisecracking animal based gadgets I would have liked to have seen one or two of them in the house. In my mind the fold out flaps were completely unnecessary and really didn't add value. I'd rather have seen a slightly bigger house. So that was the Flintstones house and car but before we wrap up we need to say hi to some very important people. Meet Fred, Wilma, Betty and Barney. Addressing one immediate problem, Barney seems to have grown somewhat. Referring back to the cartoon, Barney was always considerably shorter than Fred. And as you can see here, he's exactly the same size. They also appear to have freakishly similar faces. And they get their hair cut at the same barber as Emmett Brokowski. Yes, it's the same mould in three different colours. Out of all of the minifigures, I think Fred is probably the pick of the bunch. He's wearing this animal skin suit, complete with this blue necktie. I don't know what animal this might be, but it's definitely the right print for Fred. And he looks very cool. He's got these dual moulded legs on there with the flesh colour and with the orange. And then we've got a little bit of printing around the bottom now. We've got a kind of ragged edge of the trousers of the or the pants of the suit. And then a little bit of flesh tone printing there to cover up the orange in the dual moulding. Just gives it a nice finish, but you can see a little difference in colour there. The facial expression is pretty good, I'm pretty pleased with that. And you can see the, uh, the five o'clock shadow there that Fred Flintstone has. I'm not so sure about the hairpiece, which does seem to be taken directly from Emmett, but it's the right colour and overall Fred Flintstone looks pretty much on the money. Wilma Flintstone also looks great in this white dress. I did wonder at first why Lego hadn't given us a kind of skirt piece to go around the bottom, but I do think the printing actually makes up for that. It does actually look very sharp. We have the dual moulded legs here with white at the top and flesh at the bottom. And then again, we've got this kind of frayed edge to the dress and a little bit of pink printing on the bottom there so you can't see the dual moulding. It actually comes off really well. Now the dress overall, the torso piece is a nice nipped in waistline. And then we've got Wilma's kind of chunky necklace there. It's got kind of rocks around it. Looks really cool around the back. Yep, just the back of the necklace and the nipped in waist again. And you can see we've got the arms exposed. Really nice facial expression there. I think that does look like Wilma. And if we turn that off, we have an alternate around the back. Wilma does have a rather disapproving face, which she often uses with Fred. She often chastises Fred in the cartoon. And I think that is perfect. Putting the hair back on, she has the most amazing kind of uh, fringe thing going on here but again it does look like Wilma I'm pretty sure that's a new hair piece it's got to be with this big fringe piece here and that is Wilma Flintstone Betty Rubble is dressed very fashionably in this blue dress and again we've got these dual moulded legs with the light blue at the top and the flesh at the bottom and again we've got the kind of uh, torn dress bottom here on the hem and a little bit of pink printing just to hide the uh, I guess the dual moulding on the legs. Really nice torso piece with the fashionable uh, dress there and then this um, I guess that's going to be a strap coming down holding the dress up at the front and then there's a nice kind of rock or gem there on the front and yeah, you can see it's kind of a halter neck dress there with the arms exposed. We've got this great haircut. I don't think this is exclusive to Betty, but it really does suit her. I love the kind of uh, flared out appearance around the sides there. And then this really nice facial expression. Yeah, it looks very, very cute. And then around the back, she's having a good old laugh. That's a really, really unique facial expression. Let me just put the hair back on so you can see how that looks. <laughs> Not like that. Come on. There we go. Yeah, she looks great like this. I actually really like that facial expression and I think that might make it to the thumbnail. And finally, we have the amazing giant Barney Rubble. Now, Lego could have avoided this situation with Barney's legs being too long because we do have minifigures with shorter legs. And these aren't child legs. The one you see on the right here is Ron Weasley from the collectible Harry Potter figures. And you will see he's got these mid-length legs which just make him a little bit shorter, but not crazy short like the kid minifigures. And that would have been perfect. We do have these. They kind of bend as well. They're just a little bit shorter than the adult legs. And these would have been perfect but I don't know why Lego didn't use those maybe the Flintstones set was planned too far in advance for the uh, collectible minifigure series but anyhow Again, we have dual molded legs in this brown color and the flesh color, the torn hem at the bottom here and a little bit of pink printing. We've got a fairly plain top on here with the ties on the front. 
What have we got around the back? A little bit of printing there for the space around the arms and around the neck, and then the exposed arms like we see on these Flintstones characters. I didn't point out with Fred, we don't have a facial expression on the back, and the same goes for Barney, so you didn't miss anything there. And then we got this standard uh, Emmett Brokowski haircut in blonde, which I think is a new thing, could be wrong. And then this fabulous dopey facial expression, which actually looks quite a lot like the one we saw on Fred. But overall, apart from the legs being way too long, he's actually quite a cool little Barney Rubble figure. So that was set number 21316, the Flintstones, the 24th set from LEGO Ideas. I think it's fair to say this one has been pretty eagerly anticipated. And I just want to say a personal thanks to Andy Clark for making this thing happen. Whilst I think the retail set accomplishes most of what Andy was trying to do, I definitely get the impression that LEGO was working to a price constraint. This set was $70, which sure isn't cheap. But honestly, I think I would have paid a little bit more to have the extra elements. It's a real shame that we didn't get the Pebbles and Bam Bam minifigures, but it's very possible that was an IP issue and not a LEGO issue. There are less excuses for missing out Dino though. Dino is a really hard character to make without creating a special mould. And without being disrespectful, I don't think Andy's version of Dino was the best thing in the world. Showing Dino missing on the TV made me smile, but ultimately it felt a little bit cheap. The Flintstones car is fantastic. The only thing I didn't really like about this was the ribs. Maybe the coloration should have been white, red, white, red, or maybe they should have used some printed parts. But either way, to a Flintstones fan, it was obvious what these were. And I love the fact you can tip the car on the side to recreate the scene from the credits. The outside of the house was simply stunning and I really like the palm tree edition. Even the roof was a very solid build and really captured the Stone Age essence. Not that humans were building these in the Stone Age of course. The interior however was a little bit lacklustre and the lack of animals really spoiled it for me. But ultimately this set is aimed mainly at adult fans of Lego and we're going to display it rather than play with it. Well, maybe, anyway. As a display piece and a conversation piece, this knocks it out of the park. I suspect the conversations will be, where's Pebbles? Where's Bam Bam? But who knows, maybe we'll get a collectible range of Hanna-Barbera figures in the future. Actually, that would be really cool. So in conclusion, I do think this is a little bit dumbed down from the fan design model, but I think it's an acceptable end product for the $70 price point. Had it been $50, it would be a fantastic end product. I really hope you enjoyed this Flintstones unboxing, speed build and review video. If you did, a thumbs up is always appreciated and please feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section below. I make these videos all of the time so if you're not already a subscriber, be sure to hit the subscribe button and as my kids keep reminding me, ring the bell. Thanks a million for checking out today's review, stay safe and we'll see you on the next build video.